Hello, I'm Luke Nella and welcome to Best Few Plays of the Week. In this episode we have a medium with a will to win, a pair of heavies standing united, and a tiger with brain to back up their brawl. But before we get started, I want to refresh your memory about how you can get featured on Best Few Plays of the Week. You can even snag yourself some gold if you get featured. It's easy. Here's how you do it. First, upload a replay on whatreplays.com, click login, select your region, and then click login again. You'll be taken to wargaming.net, so use your wargaming.net account to log in. Once you're back on What Replays, find the big Upload Replay button. Click Choose File, then navigate to your Replays folder. Find and select your replay, press Open, then the orange Upload Replay. Click on Contest, and then Best Replays of the Week. There's no need for any troublesome timestamps. Just enter a short description and hit Set. Remember, we want your amazing replays, and you can get gold and the chance to show off. It's a win-win. Did you get all that? Good. Now let's get on to the first replay. Our first replay was submitted by Michael21 from the EU server. He's going to show us how a medium tank with a tough flat side can take an entire team's worth of fire and reign victorious when the battle is done. The E50 is a German powerhouse with a great gun and a thick set of armor to make up for its uh, lack of curves. Mines is an old map and since its inception, the hill has been the main focus for thick waves of fire. This sounds like a great place for Michael to take his intimidating German armor. Aha! Artie knocks the track off this French autoloader. This is a perfect opportunity to quickly remove this dangerous French foe. The T-49 and AMX CDC on the other hand are not so exposed and they are being supported by heavy fire from their base. No matter though, as the E-50 side armor soaks it all. Ouch! Michael reversed an inch too far and received a heavy hit from the Object 704. The Russian BL-10 gun rang true for its shooter today. Apart from that, we're back to the sweet sound of ricochets. But amid this musical number, a smarter than average T-34 switched to high explosive, allowing some damage to seep through. It doesn't take long for our emboldened commander to run out of hit points. Retreat! Looky here, thanks to Michael's efforts of distracting so many enemy tanks, the east flank is overrun and the team cleans up the remaining enemy tanks. While the other numbers don't speak so highly, Michael soaked over five times his own tank's HP, a valiant earner of our Steel Wall Award. Next, we'll go over to the American server where Ruben1Alpha is going to demonstrate to us how to play a support medium. The Leo PTA has great mobility and a great gun, so Swamp is a great place to do it. A true confederate tries to give his team an early lead, and Ruben does just that. Three well-aimed shots with the Leo's 390 Alpha gun mixed with some nice starting damage. Alas, that's not enough, and the team have been overrun on the eastern flank. Time to try and reclaim some of the lost advantage. Hang on! This T-25 pilot and E-50 think they have the hardened metal to take on our confederate. Not a chance. Another duo. Will these two be able to stop our confederate? Not without shells they won't. The shame is too much. Meanwhile the western flank that had been holding steady have run out of stamina and are being repelled. Time to even out the odds. Slow down there, Sturv. You were still spotted while attempting to flank. And our quick thinking Vindicator knows just what to do. Well, someone else can have that one. Did someone say free damage? Yes, please. Nicely done, Ruben One Alpha, showing us exactly how effective a medium tank with no armor can be used in the right position. Now, let's head back down to Tier 6 with Heartbreaker from the EU region. Will our hearts be broken or the enemies? The VK3002M is a monster when top tier, boasting mobility, armor, and firepower. Everything he needs to shred his way through the middle road on Lakeville. 
Meeting the leopard along the way barely warrants a parting glance as he leaves but a scratch on Heartbreaker's thick front plate. Now it's time to become a Killian heir and knock out guns before the battle has even properly begun. Well aimed shot after well aimed shot leaves the enemy scrambling for cover. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's an Electo. It doesn't want to be left out all the fun Heartbreaker is having on the front line. Unfortunately for the Electo, the fun didn't last long. However, now the formidably armored 88 stands guarding the pass. Aru! With some skillful baiting and angling, the 88 becomes far less deadly and is soon peppered full of holes. Eight kills in, but there are still more to get. Two well-aimed shots on the Matilda puts our hero one step from their goal. Maybe it's too late. Nope, that T-50 is right back where the enemy team started and the 10th kill is secured. <laughs> Along with a cheeky platoon invite to gather a strategic crucial contribution. In just 3 minutes and 45 seconds our hero managed to kill two thirds of the enemy team, securing an elusive pools medal as well as our top gun award. All the while not losing a single hit point. Well played Heartbreaker. Now that engines have warmed up, let's triple R into a brothers in arms display from the American region. Our champions are Kirby Man in an M103 and DSK Corp in a VK4502 Porsche off stiff B. Two very well armored heavies. Wait, top tier Himmels as heavies? <laughs> this is gonna be brutal. Kirby makes a strong opening play in the center window where he is holed down to that T34. Meanwhile, Corp drives to the banana where it is best, putting that VK's very strong frontal plate to best use and effectively barricading the pass. Not much initial activity from either team as they size each other up through the gaps and windows. Suddenly, an ST1 comes barreling down the banana with no intention of stopping. This Braveheart style charge gives a plus 10 courage buff to all surrounding tanks and soon a landslide of enemy tanks are pushing towards Corp. Kirby quickly responds to their friend in need and assumes a perfect hold down position just behind. Let the melee begin! Corp meets Braveheart head on and face hugs the first enemy tanks. This fantastic tactic nullifies the numerical advantage and the soldiers behind don't have a clear shot. So good Corp, this is my style of fighting. Let's not forget the rest of the team as that crossfire from the charioteer on the hill is spot on and the reds start popping. This failed push has left the enemy team short of tanks which allows our team to go into cleanup mode. It looks like the other team has a similar set of odds that our brave platoon had. but they don't even attempt to work together and get hunted down one by one. Kirby gets the lion's share of the remains, managing to secure a top gun with the much more nimble M103. Nicely done you two, the enemies charged in but lacked your coordination and fell like dominoes. Nine kills for Kirby Man and DS Corps together with plenty of damage. Now we've finally arrived at the best replay of the week. It was submitted by Billy Dion? Billy Dion. Billy Dion? Billy, Billy Dion. Yeah, Billy Dion. Billy Dion from the EU region. The mighty vehicle of choice for this battle is the heavy tank number six, a monster of a tank when top tier. It has formidable armor, leaving it only vulnerable to artillery and very high pen tier six guns in this match. This 88mm gun with 220 alpha makes short work of these puny panzers. Hmm, as mentioned, Artie will be a threat. Billy Diem better not forget that again. The western flank has been lost and the battle in the city rages fast, with many allies being destroyed. Some great play will be required to swing this battle. Be Billy Diem? Billy Diem? Billy Diem? Time to show us how it's done! That was quite the display. A tank graveyard has been raised in the city surrounding our champion, all the while remaining safe from the artillery. 
Lesson well learned, it seems, from that opening relay shot. This firefly underestimated our champion and has been left with nowhere to run. Billy Dion destroys the troublesome medium and remains in shelter. Now that they're unspotted, it should be safe to... Whoa! What reactions? That was a quick shot. I wasn't expecting that KV-5 to pop out there, but I'm not Billy Dion. They swatted it like a fly. A swift drive behind the building leaves the enemy without a clean shot. Well, almost. Well, okay, now it's payback time. This bishop is spotted and a good shot between the buildings leaves him struggling to retaliate. Cue the building trick. Check. This Qingnu and Grille could be anywhere by now and there's only five minutes remaining. Surely the best choice now is to cap and draw them out. The Grille attempts to blind shot the usual locations. Nope. Nope. And... Nope. The Qingnu must now attempt to fight our champion to reset, but a well-aimed shot in his track stops him cold. Denied. Our hero doesn't recklessly kill the Chinese medium though. Pay attention to Billy Dion's position. They knew where the RT was firing from. Great thinking. Shall we try to hunt the RT with three minutes left on the clock? Nah, that's far too risky. Much safer to cap. As the RT is alone, there's no chance to get spotted. So the best place to cap is in the open, where the blind shots are least likely to land. Let's watch the fireworks. Lovely. What a phenomenal carry from start to finish. A great display of mind and mouse, owning a pool's medal for 10 kills and almost 4,000 damage in a tier six game. Spectacularly done, Billy Dion. You are the best of the week. That's it for this week. I can't wait to see lots more replays from you, but remember to turn your replay saver on in the option. So head out there and get your treads dirty. There's gold to be earned. And by the way, Best Replays of the Week is now on the World of Tanks Reddit. You can check it out with the link in the description. I'm Luke Nella, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.